Hey guys, Ms. Marusik here, and in this video we're going to talk about solution stoichiometry. This takes what we've learned with solutions, things like calculating the molarities of ions, net ionic equations, drawing particle diagrams, identifying spectator ions, and combines it with what we've talked about with reaction stoichiometry, specifically limiting reactant problems. So to start us off here, they've given me amounts of two different reactants. We notice that both of them are compounds, and then they've asked me how many grams of precipitate will be made, and what are the concentrations of each type of ion remaining in this solution at the end. And so I can see here that I'm calculating with various amounts, and so I know I'm going to be doing a limiting reactant problem. So the very first step I took was to write my balanced reaction down. Um, potassium iodide is Ki lead to nitrate is PbNO32. They mentioned that both of those are solutions, and so I put AQ. I know when I have a compound and a compound that those would do a double replacement reaction. So the potassium and the nitrate pair up to give me KNO3. The lead and the iodide pair up to give me PbI2 when I balance out those charges. And so then I put my coefficients of 2 and 2 on the potassium iodide and the potassium nitrate in order to balance this out. Now the other thing I went ahead and did is predicted some states on my products. I noticed that it mentions I am making a precipitate. So I knew at least one of my products had to be a solid. Well since this KNO3 has both a group 1 and a nitrate in it. I knew that had to be soluble, and so therefore the lead to iodide had to have been my solid precipitate. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start to map out the information that I have. They tell me for potassium iodide that I have 60 milliliters. And then they give me a molarity. Now, I know from molarity, it's much more helpful to have liters instead of milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead and convert my milliliters into liters. That would be 0 0.0600 liters. And then I'm going to write my molarity down of 0 0.332. I'm going to do the same thing for the lead to nitrate. There it tells me I have 20 milliliters, which I know that to be 0 0.02 liters. And then I'm going to write down my molarity of 0 0.530. And then I notice in part A, it asks how many grams of the precipitate will be made. Well, the precipitate was this PBI2, so I'm going to put question mark grams over there. Now, I see they've given me amounts of two different reactants, asked me about the amount of a product, and so I can see that this is a limiting reactant problem. So I know that I'm going to have to take both of these reactants and figure out how much product they're capable of making. So I'm going to go ahead and create a map for both of those calculations. I know that for the potassium iodide, I would need a mole to mole ratio step to that PBI2. Um, I know that that is, again, using those coefficients known as the mole ratio. Here on potassium iodide, I'm going to use the volume and the molarity to get into moles. Now, you could do that with the molarity calculation separate from your stoichiometry, or you can convert liters into moles using the molarity, which is the way I'm going to do it. Over here on this other side, I would want to go moles into grams using the molar mass. I'm going to set up a similar step for the lead to nitrate. I again see I have liters and molarity, so I'm going to use the liters to get into moles using the molarity as a conversion factor. I'm then going to do a mole to mole ratio here to the PBI2 and then moles into grams utilizing the molar mass. Now I went ahead and set up those two pieces of stoichiometry. So let's talk about them here for just a moment. So here's my potassium iodide starting off with my volume. Here's how I used my molarity. I said for every one liter, there's 0 0.332 moles. So that's using that 0.332 molarity. Then I did my mole to mole ratio. There's a two to one mole to mole ratio between those. And then I said, hey, every one mole of PBI2 has a molar mass of 461 grams, which I just tallied off of the periodic table. And so that got me that the Ki is capable of making 4.59 grams of PBI2.
I then went and did the same thing for the lead to nitrate to figure out how much PBI2 it could make. So I started off with my two liters of PBNO32. I then did my molarity, one is 0 0.530 moles. So then I did my mole to mole ratio, one mole to one mole here, because again, the coefficients are one and one. And then I did my molar mass step, which got me a value of 4.89 grams of PBI2. So now here's where I can compare my two answers. I would say to myself, well, hey, 4.59 is the smaller of those two values. So once I hit that amount of product, I'm going to run out of potassium iodide. I'm not going to have any more left of that reactant. And so therefore, the max amount of PBI2 I can make is the smaller of these two values, the 4.59 grams. And what that means about potassium iodide is that it's my limiting reactant. On the flip side, I'm never going to be able to make this 4.89 grams because I'm going to run out of that potassium iodide. So therefore, this PBNO32, I'm not going to use all of that up. There's going to be some remaining of it at the end. And so therefore, the lead nitrate is my excess reactant. Now, once I have that figured out, I then know some other things. Any ions that are shared by both the limiting reactant and the solid precipitate will be completely used up. So let's look at our precipitate formula and our limiting reactant, PBI2 and Ki. Notice what ion is in common there. We see that iodide ion in common. And so what that means is that I'm gonna be using all of the iodide ions up. They were in the limiting reactant, and every one of those ions is going to go towards being part of that solid precipitate. However, all of the other ions will have at least some amount present in the final solution. That includes the potassium, that includes the nitrate, and it even includes the lead. So let's talk about that in terms of a particle diagram here for just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to start off here with kind of almost thinking about a complete ionic equation for my balanced reaction that I wrote up here. I can see for my first reactant, Ki, it was aqueous, so it would break up into ions. And because of this two that's in the front of it, I would end up in this beaker with two potassium ions and two iodide ions. And I am going to make myself a note here that this was the limiting reactant. Okay. For my other reactant, the PBNO32, it as well was aqueous. So it would break up into one lead and two nitrates. And this was an excess. So then, when I go make my final container over here, I know I'm going to have at the bottom of this some PBI2. I'm going to have that solid precipitate down there at the bottom. But now let's think about what would be in the solution. First off, I know that this KNO3 being aqueous would split up into ions. So I end up with the two potassiums and the two nitrates. So I'm going to draw in the two potassiums and also my two nitrates. But there's actually gonna be something else in here that we haven't talked about before. Remember back over here, I used up all of these iodines to go make PBI2. But technically this compound was an excess. So what that means is there's gonna be a little bit of PB plus two ions in here. Not a lot, not as much as the Ks and the nitrates, but I'm going to have a little bit left in there. Not all of it went to making that solid. Most of it did, but I'm still going to have some in excess. And so what our job is going to be now for these next problems is to figure out the concentration of these ions in this final solution. Now there's one other thing we have to address about this final solution. If you remember the potassium iodide had 60 milliliters, 
of that solution. The lead nitrate, I had 20 milliliters of that solution. So when I combine those two solutions together, my final volume over here is going to be 80 milliliters. And so I'm going to have to be very careful with my concentrations to make sure that I'm addressing that 80 milliliters and what molarity they would have in that and not the molarity they would have in these smaller volumes. So I've got to be really careful there. So let's go ahead and talk about the other things we need to calculate up here now. Um, we've kind of already done A and C. We've addressed the grams of precipitate that would be made, and we also completed the particle representation. But what we need to do now is actually calculate the concentrations of each type of ion remaining in the solution after the reaction. Now, one of these is going to be really easy. The one that's really easy is iodide. Iodide was in the limiting reactant, and then all of it went into the solid precipitate. So what that means is that it's all going to get used up, and the final concentration of that iodide ion at the end will be zero molarity. So anytime you see you have your ion that's in the limiting, and it all goes to the solid, all goes to the precipitate, that ion is going to be zero molarity at the end. Okay, so that's the easy one. Next, let's talk about the potassium and the nitrate for a moment. Now, I actually want to go back to my picture that we did down here for a moment. I noticed that all of the potassium I had at the beginning, I still had in the solution at the end. So if I can figure out how many moles I had to begin with, and I divide it by my new total volume at the end, I should be able to get my molarity. And so that's how we're going to approach this. So what I did is I used the information about potassium iodide right here to go and calculate its number of moles. So I said, hey, I have 0 0.0600 liters of potassium iodide. It has a molarity of 0 0.332 moles for every one liter. And then I said for every one mole of Ki, when that dissociates, I'm going to get one mole of potassium ions out of it. And so that gets me that in that original solution, I had 0 0.01992 moles of potassium ions. So now I can take that and divide it by that new total volume of my solution. I'm now in 80 milliliters or 0 0.08 liters. So once I do the moles divided by the liters, that gets 0.249 molarity for that solution for those potassium ions. I can do something very similar for the nitrate. Again, with the nitrate, looking at my particle diagram, all of the nitrates I had at the beginning, I still have at the end. It's the same number of moles. It's just now I'm going to have it in a new total volume. So I'm going to approach this from this very same way. I'm going to take my initial information and figure out exactly how many moles of nitrate ions that I had. And so to do that, what I did is I said, hey, if I had those 20 milliliters of lead to nitrate solution or 0 0.02 liters, I know the molarity is 0 0.530 moles for every one liter. But I also know that, that when that lead nitrate dissociates, for every one mole that dissociates, I'm going to end up with two moles of nitrate ions here. So I had to be careful on that ratio. And so that got me 0 0.0212 moles of nitrate ions. So again, then I can take that moles and divide it by my new total volume. The new total volume were those 80 milliliters or 0 0.08 liters. And so that gets me 0.265 molarity for the nitrate ions. So neither of those two calculations were that bad. I just had to figure out how many moles I had to start off with of the ions and divide it by that total new volume. Now the tricky one is gonna be the lead. And the reason why the lead is tricky is because again, 
I used a lot of it to make this solid, so there's only going to be a little bit left here in the solution. And I'm trying to figure out the molarity left of it in the solution. And so what I'm going to need to do is figure out how much of this did I actually use to make that PBI2 and how much of it then is going to be left over at the end to dissolve. Do we see how where this is going? It's kind of like I'm doing an excess reactant calculation where I have to figure out how much I had, how much I used, and then I can get the amount left over. See what I mean? So let me put my work up here for that one. So again, this was in both the excess reactant and in the solid precipitate. And when I have that combination, what happens is that not all of that ion is going to be used. Some of it will still be left in the solution. And our goal is to figure out how much of it did I have, how much of it did I use, and then I can figure out my leftover. So the first thing I did here is I figure out how much I had. And so what I did is I started with my amounts that I had here of the lead nitrate solution because that's where the lead ions were at. And I said, hey, I had 20 milliliters or 0 0.02 liters. My molarity was 0 0.530 moles for every one liter. And then I said, for every one lead nitrate that dissociates, I make one mole of lead ions. And so that got me 0 0.01. 106 moles of lead ions that I had to begin with. So next, I had to figure out how much of it I used to make my solid. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this, but remember whenever I calculate how much I used of something, I always go back and think about that limiting reactant. If I know I had that limiting reactant to start off with, how much of the other reactant then did I actually use? And so what I did here is I started off with the potassium iodide, my limiting reactant. And I said, hey, let me get my liters into moles. So I set a molarity calculation. And then I set a mole to mole ratio. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get from how much potassium iodide I had to how much of this lead nitrate did I actually use. So what I did is I said there's a two to one ratio between those compounds. And then I said for one of that compound, I end up releasing one mole of lead ions. And when I did that, that got me a value of 0 0.00996 moles of lead ions that I used. These would have been used and would have become part of the solid precipitate, meaning they're no longer in the solution. So then, Here's where I do my infamous had minus used equals leftover. I had 0 0.0106 to begin with. I used 0 0.00996. So to subtract those, that gets me a little bit 0 0.00064 moles of lead left over. And so now I can say, hey, those leftovers are in that 80 milliliters of solution at the end. And so I can divide that by the 0.08 liters and figure out my molarity of those lead ions at the end. Now I do want to point out, notice that concentration is pretty small, but it should be small. Remember, I used the bulk of that ion to make my product, my precipitate, and so there's only going to be a few left as ions in this solution. All right, hopefully we're feeling confident with being able to perform a stoichiometry calculation involving solutions. Um, these are really good to practice with. I know that last calculation in particular was a little bit tricky, so I strongly recommend practicing with these, and you'll feel a lot better with them after you do so. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.